Consistency is key. Consistency is the challenge. These were the words that were scribbled across the mirror of my friend Rajiv's bedroom. These were the words of someone so dedicated to self-improvement that they held power within them. Four months back, Rajiv and I sat in a cafe in Singapore, where we were both living at the time. We had just finished a workout class, and I remember Rajiv looking up at me with a big smile across his face and sharing that he had just taken steps towards achieving one of his biggest dreams, to become a fitness instructor. In the months prior, I had seen Rajiv dedicate himself to a healthy lifestyle, working out consistently, eating healthily, and the effect showed, not just on his body, but in his spirit. His exuberant energy inspired me to chase one of my similar dreams, to become a spin instructor. And so that day, we set off. We shared programming with each other, we sent music, and ultimately we did it. And when the time came, we proudly attended one another's classes. And let me tell you, no one lit up a studio like Rajiv did. My world shook to its core the day that we lost Rajiv. I had lost a close friend, and with him, my belief. He was on his way towards achieving his fullest potentials. And in an instant, it was all taken away. I had heard about experiencing grief before. The helplessness, the sadness, the denial, the stages. But I was unprepared for the chaos that followed. And I was unprepared to face that chaos alone. For some reason, talking about grief is taboo, which is hard for me to comprehend because it's one of the most human and universal experiences that we'll have in life. Whether we like it or not, every one of us will or has lost someone that we loved. So why then do we tiptoe around it? Why not open up? Because in my experience, trying to confine it or control it doesn't work. My grief is everywhere, and I'm learning to live with it, to truly live in this chaos. So today, let's open up, and let's talk about the experience of loss. Then, let's talk about what it's like to experience another person's grief, until finally, we meet this moment and learn how to ride through the chaos together. After Rajiv passed, I remember walking to his apartment, the canal sparkling off on my right, and bars on my left where we used to watch tennis together. I remember a distinct ringing in my ears and the whole world muted around me. A tension formed within me. On the one hand, I wanted to smile and reminisce about our tennis rivalry. I'm a Federer fan, he was an Nadal fan. And on the other, I wanted to cry out in desperation. Why him? How could this have happened? How will things ever be the same? As I entered his apartment, the silence provided answers. Things won't ever be the same. It's hard to conceptualize loss, but the Kubler-Ross model tells us that there are five stages of grief. Denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. This sounds like a pretty nice framework. All I have to do is work through each stage of grief like a twisted video game, and ultimately, I'll be fine. Well, dark humor aside, I do think that these stages are helpful. These are feelings that I've had deep in my morning. But the notion that there are set stages to work through or a path to move down doesn't resonate with me. The so-called cycle of grief actually felt like a roller coaster. And I couldn't and honestly still can't see each drop and each turn. At times, I feel like I'm strapped in and I can't get off. 
And at other times, I feel unbuckled, like I'm going to fly out at any time. The waves of emotion are random and sporadic. Tearing up in an accounting class, crying on my way to get a COVID test, or laughing and reminiscing in a spin class. So what's it called when, instead of moving through each stage of grief, I'm bouncing from anger to depression to bargaining to acceptance? Why then, two years later, do I feel that second stage of grief, anger, that I'm standing on this stage and Rajiv is not? Well, it's called chaos. And it's messy. And it's uncontrolled. But it's human. I returned to work four days after Rajiv passed. And my wonderful team welcomed me back with compassion, well wishes, and pity. You know the kind. The slight tilt of the head, the concerned furl of the brow, the hunching of the mouth. I dreaded every single interaction, wondering if these pity stares would ever stop. Despite the good intentions of my colleagues, and despite the condolence texts and the heart emojis from my friends, I felt alone in my sorrow. These displays of love were kind and were caring. And I get it. We care so much about our friends and our loved ones that we want to say the right thing or send the right text. But while we're deliberating, the grieving are grieving alone. We stay on the surface of the water, looking down into the dark, deep, murky waters, afraid to pull our loved ones back under. But in doing so, we prevent them a chance to express their needs, whether that be distance, an expression of sorrow, or laughing and reminiscing in fond memories. So what do we do? How do we grieve and how do we support? How do we ride through this chaos? Well, grievers, you cannot and should not hold yourselves to feeling some certain type of way. You don't need to be in a specific stage of grief. As author Megan Devine tells us, survival and grief, and building a life alongside grief comes with it a willingness to bear witness to both yourself and to those who find themselves living a life that they didn't see coming. We have to be honest with ourselves. What stage of grief am I feeling today? Where am I in this chaos? And then if we can, we need to be honest with those around us. As they tiptoe around, can we ground them by telling them what we need and what we don't? And supporters, you don't need to say the right thing or help cheer us up. You don't need to feel my sorrow. I would never wish that upon anyone. But it means the world to me that you recognize it and that you sit with me as I experience it. Megan Devine continues on to say that some things can't be fixed. They can only be carried. Will you sink into that chaos and help carry that weight of sorrow? Will you be there consistently, ready and patient, no matter where the, that person who is grieving is at? Because that, perhaps, is the most generous thing that you can do. Loss is inevitable, and grief is eventual. But when we meet it, I hope that we will be brave. As grievers, I hope that we'll hang in there. I hope that we will feel our feelings and express our needs. And supporters, I hope that you will choose to carry that weight and be consistent in your support for your loved ones. As we ride through this chaos together, I hope that we'll remember what Rajiv taught me and now you. Consistency is key. Consistency is the challenge. Thank you.